Math 2415, Chapter 10, Vectors in the Geometry of Space, Section 2, Vectors, Video 8, Vector Properties. In this video, we're going to state some things that are fairly obvious, or they may seem intuitively obvious. And we're going to prove one of them, because from a theoretical perspective, just because you think something is true doesn't mean it is true, but you might be able to prove it. And the way you prove it is you connect it to things that you've already accepted are true. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. We're going to start with uh, three vectors and two scalars. If A, B, and C are elements of Vn, just a reminder, this symbol is a relationship between an object and a collection of objects, and it states, or it's translated as, is an element of, and basically means that these things are inside this collection. In this case, A, B, and C are vectors in Vn, meaning they have a certain number of components, whatever n equals and C and D are elements of the real numbers, which is the same as saying that C and D are scalars, then there's eight properties we're gonna list, and a lot of these are gonna make so much sense, it's not, so much sense it's not even funny. Property one, if you add vector A plus B, it's equal to the sum of B plus A. In other words, this is saying that vector addition is commutative. The commutative property says that the order that you add things in is irrelevant. A plus B equals B plus A. And we take that for granted with real numbers. 3 plus 5 equals 5 plus 3. It happens to be true for vectors, but you can't just assume that it's true. There are operations that even look like addition in higher level math classes that are not commutative in the sense that you can't just change the order and get the same answer. Now visually, you can think about why these are equal. Think about the parallelogram rule, if you will. But that's what the first property is, is that vector addition is commutative. <clears throat> um, you may be familiar with the commutative property, and if you are, then you're probably also familiar with the associative property, which says, if you add three objects and you add these two first, you'll get the same answer as if you add the first two first. In other words, Vector A plus the quantity vector B, I'm just going to stop saying vector. A plus the quantity B plus C is equal to the quantity A plus B and then adding C. And what this is saying is that vector addition is associative. It's called the associative property. And we know that's true for real numbers. Right now we're saying that it's also true for vectors. I'm not going to prove it, but I could. The third property says if you take any vector and add the zero vector, guess what you get? Well, the zero vector has no magnitude, so it doesn't change the displacement after you've added the first vector, so it's just A. Well, that's kind of obvious. Anything plus zero is itself. Yeah, I know. Property four says if you take a vector A and add it to its opposite, you get the zero vector. That makes sense. A says go this direction. Negative A says go the opposite direction. So if I do them back to back, my total displacement is zero. The sum is the zero vector. 5, 6, 7, and 8 involve scalars. 5 says if you take a scalar C and multiply it times the sum of two vectors, well, what do you think you could do? It looks like you can distribute, and you can. To find C times A plus B, you can just do C times A times C plus B. 6 is also a distributive property, but instead of distributing scalar multiplication across vector addition, you're distributing scalar multiplication across scalar addition. In other words, if you add two scalars and then multiply them times a vector, you can distribute and say, well, let me take the scalar, first scalar multiple of the vector plus the second scalar multiple of the vector. In other words, it looks like you can distribute and you can. The seventh property kind of looks like the associative property. If you're finding the product of two scalars as a scalar multiple of the vector, then you can reassociate the parentheses and basically do one scalar multiple of the other. And then 8 says if your scalar is 1, well, 1 times any vector is itself. And again, these are so intuitive that you would probably do them without even questioning whether or not they're legitimate moves. All I'm doing now is saying that they are. Technically speaking, you're not supposed to pull off a move that hasn't been proven yet, even if I tell you that they're true. From a purely theoretical math perspective, you should verify that any property is true before you just accept it at face value. 
I'm going to prove that property number one is true, that the addition of vectors is commutative. The way all of these proofs would work is at the component level. So if we're going to prove number one, we need to start by representing A and B in terms of components. So let's start by saying let vector A be the vector whose components are A1, A2, dot, 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 A, N. And the same thing for vector B, except I'll use B's instead of A's. B1, B2, dot, 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 B, N. Then, this is going to be a real simple proof. To prove two things are equal, you can start with the left side and wind up with the right side. So let's start with A plus B. We've already defined adding two vectors as adding their corresponding components, which means the sum of these two vectors would be a1 plus b1, comma, a2 plus b2, comma, dot, 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 an plus bn. And I'm sorry, I think I'm reaching the limits of where my screen is picking up the board. It, yeah, it's in there. All right, so what does this get us? Well, here's what it gets us. We are now looking at the sum at a component level. Each of the components are real numbers. Remember, real number comma real number comma real number. Well, we know that real numbers are commutative under addition, which means at the component level, it's legitimate to now switch the order of the addition problems. B1 plus A1, B2 plus A2, comma dot dot dot, comma BN plus AN. And the justification for doing that is that addition of real numbers is commutative. That's the thing that we're taking advantage of. Well, this is the very definition of B plus A. A plus B equals B plus A. And I know it looks like we're just playing smoke and mirror games. Well, of course you can switch the order of the addition of the vectors. You just switch the order right here. But the point that I'm making from a theoretical perspective is if you want to prove something for a larger object like a vector, you can sometimes bring it down to smaller objects that you already know certain things are true. In this case, that we can switch the order of addition for real numbers and then take it back to the vector level. All seven, excuse me, all eight of these can be proven easily at the component level because they all rely on things that we already accept as true about the real numbers. That real numbers are associative. That for real numbers, any number plus zero equals zero. That for real numbers, any number plus its opposite is zero. That for real numbers, we can do the distributive property. That for real numbers, multiplication is associative and that for real numbers, one times any real number is itself. So all of those properties of real numbers are preserved as we lump them together into vectors, and we can say the same things. But like I said, in the course of doing vector calculus, we'll be doing these things without thinking twice about them. I'm just saying that, yes, they're legitimate moves, and if you force me to, we can prove every single one of them.